Hello everybody! Hi! Um, so, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous. This is my first time ever moderating a panel, so... Alright, okay. So my name is Kelsey. Um, we're going to talk about creating fan films today because we are huge nerds and we can't just have enough by even writing fan fiction. We have to actually create it and make it into a film <laughs> for you to all enjoy. Um, so, we actually have some really cool people on the panel today because we're all actually all working on one fan film together, but we all have separately worked on different fan content as well. So, the film that we're all working on together is called Sisters of House Black. Woo! Woo! And it is a Harry Potter fan Woo! film. Harry Potter fan film, yeah. We got any Gryffindors in the house? Yeah. Any Slytherins? Puff, puff, puff! Wow. Ravenclaws? Well, I'm a Gryffindor anyway, so whatever. How about Slytherin? Yeah, so Sisters of House Black is about, uh, it's a prequel film. Um, it's about uh, the sisters Bellatrix Lestrange, Andromeda Tonks, and Narcissa Malfoy, but they're obviously called Bellatrix Black before they all get married. Um, I'm playing Bellatrix. Faust here is playing... Uh, I'm playing Lucius. I'm playing Narcissa Black. And I am playing absolutely nobody. I play the guy behind the camera. Uh, I'm the DP and editor on it. Woo, That's director of photography. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we, yeah, we're all working on that film together. However, um, we have some wonderful people who are working on other fan content as well. So do you want to tell me about what you're working on? Uh, yeah, so I am working on a X-Men fan film. It's called The Uncanny Academy X. Um, it's basically set when the X-Men sort of a running a school for young mutants. I don't really want to say more than that at the moment, but yeah, that's what I'm working on as well. That sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, a, few, a few years ago, I worked on uh, two different fan projects. One was a Final Fantasy fan game, and the other was a show that, uh, called, that is how sort of like I got into the YouTube community called My Life as a Video Game. And it was a show that basically was about a guy who gets sucked into video games, and it was kind of fan filmy for every kind of video game genre, from Call of Duty to Star Fox, basically. Awesome. And Hannah, you haven't created any fan films yet. No but... fan films. <laughs> Not yet. You Maybe are, one day. You are a YouTuber and a... Yeah, I'm, I'm working on some uh, creative things. I'm trying to like get my poetry illustrated so I can make some little booklets. And um, I did write a book last year, but... We have yet to uh, publish that, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully Hannah's, soon. Hannah's actually creating her own original content. Can you? Wow. <laughs> How did you come up with the idea? What actually gave you the push to create the film or the series? Um, I uh, guess I'll start. Um, well, with, uh, with My Life as a Video Game, what I started with basically was, originally I was just writing a pilot for a web series idea, and then... Then I went to VidCon in 2012 in Anaheim and sort of everything, I realized it was my first huge convention really that was like similar size to this one. And I realized how big the YouTube community was and everything. So I decided to turn my life as a video game into something much, much bigger basically. Um, and it started out as me just saying, okay, I would love to tell a story of a guy who is sucked into where, an area where video games are real life. And then just, it kept growing and growing and invited other people on board and eventually, we ended up doing a Kickstarter, and we raised thirty-two thousand dollars for it. So, uh, and the series is first season is now out on YouTube. Awesome. How about you, Faust? Uh, for me, it was so. For years now, I've been making like these documentaries on the history of comic book characters, and like my specialty is the X Men. Um, so I just kept talking about this is this character story, and then this is another character story, and I just wanted to do something more and sort of tell the character stories in another way. And so creating a fan film to tell these character stories just seemed like the natural next step in my sort of evolution, I guess. Yeah, and to answer my own question, <laughs> um, I actually had this idea about three years ago, just like a Harry Potter fan, like imagining, I don't know, you know, like when the fandom's finished and you're just like, I wish there was more. This was before Fantastic Beasts was a thing. And I've always been super interested that none of the Harry Potter content has ever been through a female's perspective. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And then I was like, the, the whole black family is like incredibly interesting how there's like good members of the family and like bad members of the family. And Narcissa Malfoy particularly is one of my favorite characters. So I don't know, it just kind of grew from there. And then um, I created a really 
um, very lo-fi fan series of Harry Potter called Diaries of the Quiet Heroes. And doing that gave me the push to be like, hang on, I think I can try it, having a crack doing a film. This is more of an actor's question. Um, how does it feel and how did you prepare to do a role that is that a lot of people love, that is very well known? How does, like, what is that? How do you prepare for that? Um, Narcissa herself is quite uh, quiet. I think she was written to be quite an enigma, like mysterious, cunning, calculated. Um, so the biggest thing I did draw upon her character was that she has like, got so much pride and adoration for her family, um, which just overrules everything else, as you know, in the series. She pretty much saves Harry li Harry's life and lies to Voldemort just so that she can keep, up, keep her family safe. So that's probably the biggest thing I drew upon Narcissa's character, but it was so much fun exploring her character for myself and like just drawing upon little bits and bobs that um, the previous actress used to play her. So good. It's um, pretty much the same for me. Like Lu Lucius is, I think the one character, maybe one of two characters in Harry Potter that has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. <laughs> this whole story is about the villains of Harry Potter, like, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just sort of was like, okay, how do I play Lucius as a baby, still have no redeeming qualities? Baby Lucius. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just basically, yeah, adding an element of immaturity to what people already know, and mm. yeah. 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 So you, you kind of looked to Jason Isaacs a lot, like his qualities, and then... Yeah, sort of looked at those qualities, and then immature them down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it was... I found it very difficult, but also very fun at the same time. Because Bellatrix is such an iconic character. Like, people have this, like, burning image in their mind of Helena Bonham Carter's Bellatrix. But this is, like, before that. This is, like, before Azkaban. So it was really fun playing, like, those tiny elements of her, but also adding my own kind of thing onto it. The hardest thing for me was the accent. The accent, like, obviously I don't speak like Bellatrix at all, so. And I don't sound like a pure blood wizard, do I? A pure blood witch. That's <laughs> yeah, that was the most difficult thing for me. Um, you were your own original character, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, well, we say original character. I was basically playing myself, but more arrogant, more douchey, which is hard to believe, I know. Um, but, um, yeah, just a, a, a hyper extreme version of myself. To the point that I actually styled my hair backwards the other way because I didn't want it to be too close to myself. <laughs> that, that's which is completely nonsensical now that I look, look back on it, but it's these weird acting choices you make. Actually, hair. <laughs> How's it been maintaining the Lucius Malfoy hair? <laughs> Uh, I bleached it like all of once. I haven't touched it again with bleach since then. Oh my gosh, if it yeah. wasn't well, I thought that obvious. was natural. We have to, we're filming a scene um, in a week or so. Very soon, yeah, very soon. So, the roots, the roots, yeah. I, I can't wait to chop mine off. This is going. I yeah, thought all your hair same. was natural, man. <laughs> this is anyway. completely natural. It just suddenly spontaneously changed one day. I have been lied to. <laughs> okay, so. Um, a last question before I hand it out to the audience. We're going to do a Q&A. Um, what are the most fun and most difficult parts of creating the whole, the whole thing? Uh, okay. Um, the hardest part for me of creating anything uh, that might be fan-related or has an image of what people believe in their minds is sort of trying to balance... Um, especially because mine was uh, sort of parody as well, in a, to a parody but serious to a certain extent, um, in that kind of Scott Pilgrimy kind of way. Um, the, it was very hard to balance people's expectations of what game genres they wanted to see. Did they want to see? I mean, I really wanted to do a Double Dragon story arc, and we ended up doing that. But then I sort of realised not as many people have played that game as I have, um, and there's a lot of expectation to balance with that, and then going into, uh, into Sisters of House Black, there was, how do I make this look like Harry Potter without feeling like I've just gone and ripped off what, um, what Warner Brothers did, basically? 
Um, it's been so much fun working with you and everyone. Uh, it's been so much fun. I think if you go out into making a short film or making productions, just be prepared for absolute anarchy and try to thrive in that because I've been on like different kind of sized productions and every single level has absolute chaos. So you have to be like a bit of an agent of chaos to enjoy this industry. Um, but yeah, so much fun. That is actually like on the map. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to explain I, being on a set is just pure I, anarchy. I can explain just how anarchy it is, no matter how big or small it is. So anarchy. On a small set, it's anarchy because it's your push for time, you push for budget. On a big set, it's so big that you're, that you're push for time. It's the fact that Kelsey and I spent an entire week on the same set of Solo, a Star Wars story, and didn't see each other at all, even though we were literally in standing the across scene. the way from each other. Um, I guess, like, for the X-Men fan film, the most difficult thing has been, you know, m more people know the X-Men movies than the comics, and I'm really approaching this from a comic standpoint. I'm not interested in emulating the movies. The movies are so different from the comics. It's ridiculous. And so I really have to capture what fans of the movies love about the X-Men while sort of saying, hey, but this has been their identity in the original media going on, you know, 60 years now. So I really want to, like, try and push people to read the source material because, obviously, I'm creating a fan film. I want to sort of push the source out there while I'm creating this fan film. So I'm going to start with the negative first and then go to the positive because I like to end uh -oh. on a... <laughs> No, okay, so the most difficult part for me personally is because I am producing and also acting in it as well. Um, it's been hard balancing that and just because it's my first time ever working on something with such a big team of people because usually I'm just a YouTuber in my room like me, press record, hello you, I hope you're good and then that's it. Um, <laughs> But this, is <laughs> this has been a whole like, team I've had to manage myself as well as trying to play an iconic character. And the most fun part has been walking onto set and seeing your idea in real life, like being an actual thing. I don't think I'll ever get over that. Uh, we're going to open it up to a Q&A now. So if anyone has any questions, feel free. We have one right here. Hello. Um, I was just wondering, in terms of sort of making fan content, sort of, Yes, specifically to films, but just in general, what would you guys say the sort of, sort of the difference is, or is conscious in your mind? I know this is a very rambly question. I apologise um, for when you're making something that you're trying to slot into an existing canon or whatever, as opposed to something AU. So sort of because it's sort of like a prequel rather than a coffee shop AU or something. Sort of how do you approach that differently? Makes sense. I think it is like as Faust mentioned, finding the balance between the law that exists and um, what you want to create, um, and making sure that people aren't going to get angry at you for getting the law wrong. Um, um, yeah. That's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to create my film because we don't hardly know anything about these three sisters. Andromeda, the middle sister, a lot of people don't even know exists because if they've only seen the films. They haven't got a clue. She's actually Tonks' mom, if you haven't read the books. Um, and she's an awesome, like, she's Tonks' mom. She must be so cool. But yeah, um, for me, I basically researched, as I spent like a whole year researching the Black family, um, just researching the details that are already canon and then basing my ideas off of that. So we actually do have a lot of canon things in the film, but also a lot of stuff that I've had to make up. So yeah, it's just kind of doing your research and then put your own creative spin Sticking on it Sticking to well. the canon. Yeah. Hi. Um, what are things that you've learned through making this film that you would give advice as, as advice to anybody from filmmakers in the audience? What have we learned along the way? <laughs> have a good assistant director who keeps you on time. Yes. That would be yes, Jamie there who's behind the camera. Yes, there is Jamie, assistant direct, always have an assistant director. The first shoot that we did, the first scene that we did, we didn't have a... We had an assistant director, but didn't really understand what the job was. So then there were, I was trying to time keep and produce and act at the same time. Absolute mess. That, was, that is definitely a key thing. I got shouted at a lot. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, I guess what I've learned... I've learned so much stuff that it's actually like in... Com like this has, been a, this has been my film school for me. I would actually say... Actually, just going out there and making films is a whole learning experience in itself. Um, 
I can't pick out one thing I've learned because it's just all been a learning experience. I'd say in general, as um, as I mean, as one as one of the other representatives of a film, of somebody who's been to a film school, I would say actually it's worth more than a film school to actually start making oh, yeah, stuff. Definitely. Uh, especially when you consider the, the amount that you'd end up spending on a film school. Um, but there was, uh, I think, like that there was something that got said to me once on set, which was, never say something can't be done. Just figure out how it can yeah, be done. Yeah. You may have to cut down on it. You may have to change an angle. You may have to cut some things here and there or even add things. Yeah, I was actually going to add on that. Um, calm. Keep calm. And Keep calm and on. carry on. Definitely. That's what I have learned. I don't have control. Nothing is in your control. <laughs> Nothing is in your control. Just, but the things that are in your control, you, it's, it is just a case of, don't tell me it can't be done. Just figure out how it can be done because everything can be done. Humans can fly. We just need planes to do it. Yeah, actually, I think the biggest thing, you, thanks for giving me the idea. The biggest thing is I've learned is to have an open mind, definitely, when creating things. Working with a team, have an open mind. Okay. Any more questions? Oh, we will. Oh, we got one here in the cute ears. Do you have ears on? I can't see. Sorry. Cute. <laughs> um, do you have any advice for acting on a film set? On a film set specifically. What was the question? Sorry. Yeah. Um, any tips for acting on a film set? Um, well, I was just going to say, the di the biggest difference between film and theatre is with a theatre. There is people all around you, and you've got to shoot for the cheap seats. Um, because people can't hear you when, unless you're screaming loudly. So you have to be mic'd up or something. Whereas when you're on film, the camera is right in your face, or at least the, uh, the, and the audio is attached to you. So you could be a lot more subtle with your movements. And you can be, I think, subtlety was never something I was what? excelled at. <laughs> but I feel like basically when the camera is right here and is looking at every little movement your eyes and mouth and nose are making you suddenly feel a little more conscious and you just you can take it down you, you sort of like you have more time to breathe I think on camera than you do on film and you've got time if you mess up a line it's not a big deal just cut roll again I do I do pref much prefer film acting um, and the whole getting its character and also the atmosphere on set, um, film sets, not the same as, as stage atmosphere. I don't know how to describe it, but yeah. Um, I did learn whilst I was on this project that I'm, I'm a method actor. So that was something I learned whilst I was on this, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, like the biggest sort of difference is that a lot of skills for theater to film are just not transferable and I've been doing film for so long now that I can't do theater anymore, um, which is fine. Uh, so like my biggest advice is just even before you get to a set, like learn what skills that you could personally work on, even just like looking in the mirror and sort of figuring out, okay, if I tense this muscle in my face, it moves my face like this, because you really have to be sort of aware of your facial expressions while you're on camera. Because again, it's about building on that, those subtle changes especially specifically around your eyes uh, and making it feel realistic. So I'm going to be a little bit uh, con like controversial to your opinion just then. <laughs> I would say when I've been filming on film sets and stuff, I forget about the camera. I don't particularly concentrate on what my face is doing because then it doesn't come across as genuine for me. It doesn't come across as genuine. It might for you. Um, my biggest tip for, film, for on film sets is because it's long hours, very long hours, and you're doing the same thing for hours. Um, so find a way how you specifically get energy because you need that same energy in every single take. Um, for me, I like to meditate. Like I'll have a... Like, I'll just go away and have a, like, 10-minute break. I'll meditate. For some reason, that, like, gives me loads of energy. Um, and also, yeah, it's just be aware that you're going to be there doing the same thing for a long time. Um, and just have fun. It is fun. Like, you get to be that person the whole day. And it's, it's great. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I mentioned in method acting. I think yeah. it's important that you learn your, your technique and really, like, hone in on why you like acting that way and how to really get into character that way. I was going to say, actually, that there's um, 
two things. One with energy. Uh, my cure is Red Bull. Lots of it. No. Um, I've become like sort of famous for it. And at this point, they should sponsor me. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the thing I, I actually just thought about just now is that when you're on stage versus when you're on camera, the biggest difference for me is that when you're on camera, it's not to a live audience. So the director hasn't already told you what to do three days ago and, it, and you're just trying to remember what they said. The director can cut at any time. The director can give you ideas. You have a support group that isn't quite as isolating as being on stage. When you're on camera, there is a director, there is a DP. They're all working to make you look as good as you possibly can. And they will tell you when something isn't going right, when something isn't working for them. And otherwise, honestly, they're not a very good director if they're not doing that because that's their job. And they will always be able to tell you and give you an idea of what you can do. Your fellow actors could stop the tech, could like in between takes, hopefully not stop the take, sorry. Um, but in between takes could say, maybe you should try it, maybe, maybe try it this way. There's a lot of, it's a whole support group on a film set that I feel is much more supportive than in the theater. And ironically, I feel like the theater has a far bigger ego than Hollywood does. Yeah, again, and again, I would say have an open mind. If the director wants you to try something, just, just have a go. You might think, oh, that's a bit weird. But you, but you can't see what's on the camera. Like you, because like when you're a YouTuber, you can see what you're filming. But when it's um, the camera, you can't see. So if the director says, oh, maybe try it this way. Like, have a, like just, just have a go. Also, you never know. Also stay hydrated. I, re I was just going to say that. Yeah. Stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah. I really can't hydrated. emphasize this enough. Like one time a few years ago, I was on a set, didn't drink all day ended up in a back room laying down, wasting loads of people's time because they didn't keep hydrated. I was like, had a pounding headache. Because, it wasn't fun. Because, yeah, the lights can be so hot. Um, the lights are very hot. <laughs> Do, does coffee and Red Bull count as hydration? No. I'm going to die. <laughs> this is for Petros. As a DP, do you find that uh, your inspiration comes from the source films or do you feel like it comes from you yourself and like the aesthetics that you strive for? I would actually say it's a bit of 50-50. For the, uh, the sort, there is a certain, like, I would say actually a lot of the source um, ideas come in. Like, I watched the entire, I watched all, all uh, eight movies uh, beforehand. Um, oh, nine actually, because Fantastic Beast was out at the time uh, before we started shooting. I took into ideas some of the, the way the camera moves and things like that. And Kelsey actually did this, uh, like, gave me some ideas. But at the end of the day, I did a lot of, I do a lot of the, the work in post when it comes to, to the actual look of things and I think as a DP you've got to work out what's right for that scene specifically uh, not necessarily try and emulate anything because at the end of the day the creative stuff that you've got to try and do has to focus on what is right for there and now for what you're working on not what somebody else is working on that allows you to put your own print and style on it and you can focus so would you say you have your own like for Sister House Black You've still like thought of your own specific style throughout the whole, the whole film. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say that there were certain ideas that I that I were inspired by from the movies, uh, but that was I feel like a lot more that was in post doing the color grade and things like that. Whereas the uh, as the DP, it was like for example, we want I, I wanted to do try out different lighting techniques. So to demonstrate uh, Bellatrix's sort of split personality, I gave her split lighting, which is where one side of the face is completely dark and the other side of the face is light. So it's almost like this breaking down of the personality and, that, uh, and then giving um, um, Hannah slash Narcissa more of what's called the Paramount Loop, which is basically beauty lighting because she's like the more sort of, um, well, as, as beautiful as all the girls are, Narcissa is supposed to be the pretty one. And is. Thanks, so. I'll take it. Awesome. Well, that was the last Thank question. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. And... Uh, I want to give up, obviously, a promo. Check out Sisters of House Black on YouTube. We have a preview scene out. The full film is coming out later on in the year. Um, you are working on an X-Men fan film, which, you, I don't know, do you want to? Um, so I'll be releasing the first scene maybe in October, November-ish time, possibly, Ooh, I hope. Um, and uh, yeah, just sort of keep an eye out on Twitter. I'm at Rhythm Beat Music on Twitter. I'll post about it. All there. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna jab in and promo again as well. Uh, if you if you search Ellie Vision or Sisters of House Black on Instagram and Twitter, follow us there too. Woo. And uh, well, uh, aside from obviously Sisters of House Black, which I am thoroughly excited for, um, my life as a video game's first season 
which was released a few years ago now, but is all out on YouTube. We plan eventually to do a second season. Um, if you just search on YouTube for My Life as a Video Game, which is on the T-shirt right here, um, that's, uh, that's all in there to watch. And my channel is Leon Newsy. I will be releasing some Sisters of House Black uh, talks and chats on there as well. So, yeah, find us there, which is youtube.com slash leonunity or just search for My Life as a Video Game or most importantly, Sisters of House Black. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.